put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Wannabe born supremacy. Yo, seriously, in you see even in the trailer, the first time that cops go in to, you know, capture Brian, one on either side, they go in and he, you know, takes out both of them, you know, just like that. I mean, between, you know, the protagonist who was a badass by losing a loved one and being forced out of retirement to, you know, prove his innocence and get to the bottom of a case, and casting, a, you know, an award winner in you know, as the guy leading the hunt for the protagonist, I seriously expected that, you know, the end credits over this role to extreme ways, you know, the, the original, not that terrible remix. Seriously, though, Taken 3. Liam Neeson dives into his work in order to deal with the death of his wife, also in the movie. Okay, we, we knew this had to happen sooner or later. There was no immediate family left for bad guys to kidnap. And this, this time it didn't even require going to one of those scary foreign countries. Instead we just stay in the US and it's, yeah, very bland compared to, you know, Paris and Istanbul. Anyway, you know, his daughter's been captured, his ex-wife's been captured, he's been captured, you know, I was wondering who was left. So, of course, one of his female loved ones, you know, dies. They're, they're you know, complete danger magnets anyway. So, had to happen sooner or later. Yes, Brian's wife dies, his, his ex-wife. Who hated him in the first one. They're really reaching at, at this point for, you know, something to care about. Yeah. Anyway, he is framed not very well. Yeah, just not very well at all. And the trailer would have you think that he goes all Jack Bauer and has to like stop and attack and you know and the you know there's this the the phone call shoot everyone you love will be dead and you know they're like you know oh this guy's you know he you know expert demolitions and expert you know marksman and all this stuff not actually in the movie yeah, they, they pulled an Amazing Spider-Man 2 here. They really... I wouldn't mind seeing the movie that the trailer advertised. It wasn't the movie that was in theaters that, that I just came out of, but... Okay. Now... The... Now, as, as far as the, the overall concept goes, on the plus side, it's not just the second, which was really just the first with four tweaks. I mean, they, they went through the script, the first one, went search and replace, you know, moved a few scenes around. That was about it. On the downside, what we have now is just the typical, you know, former badass, forced out of retirement, now man on a mission, hunted by the government, who can't keep up. You know, it's subtle. What I'm saying is, it's not necessarily the most original, and it's... 
originality is not always a necessity, but when you are in the presence of greatness, I'm sorry, this movie has nothing anywhere near the atmosphere of Sin City, and Olivia Megaton is not Robert Rodriguez. Okay, he's better than Robert Rodriguez on a bad day, Robert Rodriguez of more recent years, but nevertheless, it does not have the big action and pure testosterone of Shooter, and Megaton is not Antoine Fuqua, and it definitely does not have the intensity of the Born Supremacy, and Megaton would never be Paul Greengrass. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm what it really boils down to is there's not an awful lot of reason to watch this movie, but and and that's just from from the the pure concept, the the overall plot. But diving in deeper, I I should say uh, the plot is of course also similar to U.S. Marshals and Machete. I guess this is no. I think I'd still say Machete is better. Actually, all all in all, been too long since I watched U.S. Marshals to be able to compare it to that. Now, the fun thing is, uh, reportedly, the Neeson agreed to this only if no one was taken. So really, the the only reason that it's that we finally have a different concept is that they realize that without Neeson, nobody would watch this flimsy crap. <laughs> the trailer really makes it seem like they reversed the good luck phone call. They only partially did, but I still, I just, taken three, you're, you're just, go sit in the corner. Now... It was, it was very clear that the first movie was not meant to start a series or a trilogy. And they say this will be the last one. <laughs> yeah, I'll believe that when I see it. Now. The... This does sort of push the PG-13 rating some, somewhat like the first two, but it really, you can really tell that it was cut down to a PG-13, like, yeah, there's some really bad cutting down of violence in this movie. Now, this one is not, you know, barely 90 minutes like the first two, this one is about 105 minutes and, you know, not counting the end credits. And you can really feel that it's, that it's longer. It, it drags, and a lot of the action just isn't very engaging. It doesn't feel like it's Taken-type action now. And much like the second one, it really does not recapture the energy and unpredictability of the first one, and that in spite of it not be, you know, the second one, at least for that, had the excuse of being a complete retread. This is very different from the first two, and it still really doesn't. Now, and and the, you know, the plot and the concept here also frees them up to have Brian use, you know, more and different guns, go to more different locations, you know, these kinds of things, given that he's no longer trying to track down a family member that has been taken from him and rescue them. And, yeah, the movie doesn't really do a lot with it. Now, it isn't quite, it, it's not particularly misogynistic. I was very pleasantly surprised on that one. Although it does still really, you know, in these movies, men who aren't spies are really just 
in the way and and pretty weak and really just yeah just you know get, get out of the way and let, let Brian do do his thing it's just, yeah now the spy buddies return they're they're given more to do and it's it's not as fun as it could be it, by all rights should be but I did still like that it's not just barbecues and golf. Now, the... I was wondering if Jamie, the, the bland and perfect boyfriend, would have returned from two, and he did. And he's actually a little more interesting in this one. He kind of teases, you know, Kim a little bit. Apparently, she is also somewhat OCD and yeah the yeah there's there's a little bit there which yeah it's I I I found him more interesting in this one at least but it's really striking just how obvious the recasting is Re recasting is fine but this guy just doesn't at all look like the first guy. Like the the they have just the the bare minimum in common. Like they they're respectful of Brian and all lovey dovey with Kim, and that's about it. Other than that, they're just completely different. And it's just in general, it seems like they 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 made sure to recast every romantic interest they could and make it as obvious as possible they made no effort to make do gray scott you know the 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 guy who was almost wolverine look at all like xander berkeley in you know the first one in one of the you know he like of all his roles about half of them he doesn't die that was one of the half where he doesn't now, I suppose that when the this this part is even in the trailer, they they say that you know when he was twenty one he joined the military, twenty three he joined the the special forces. That makes you realize that was forty years ago. It's I mean, I, I love Neeson doing this action thing as much as anybody, but he is in his 60s. It's, it's, you do have to wonder if, you know, but then, yeah, that, you know, that is common in today's movies. Some of the biggest action stars are in their 60s. Now. I was, th this one doesn't particularly retcon the way, you know, the, the second one, I mean, the, this one follows up on some of the retconning of the second one, and it does, it still doesn't really follow up on, like, like there's still no real emotional, you know, consequences to these horrible experiences. You know, Kim and Lenore seem perfectly well adjusted. Well, Lenore until she bites it, but yeah. Now, and Kim in this is less of a just constantly like cheery, you know, essentially a kid just bouncing around and just, yeah. Now, I suppose that is about it. Just, yeah, I mean, it, it has a lot of conveniences, like the first two. The, the action really doesn't feel like taken, like there's, there's a bunch of chasing which doesn't really go anywhere, just, you know, 
basically yeah, just chasing Brian trying you know getting away from cops for example and yeah like what we want to see in the Taken movie is Liam Neeson you know with melee just very quickly taking out you know bad guys and you know moving from one just you know one one area to another tracking down someone or the like and excuse me and, you know and then you know when necessary grabbing a gun really quickly you know shooting you know the the guy like one bullet per guy basically and really quickly taking out a lot and yeah it's just not not that much of that in this and instead we have like a lot of it is just Neeson trying to figure out Brian trying to figure out what happened you know who killed his wife and he's doing all the the standard stuff for that you know he's checking footage from security cameras he is yeah it's it's just it's not very interesting and it's there's there's no energy to it now and it's also Brian makes a lot of mistakes that you really wouldn't expect him to like you know the moment you see you wouldn't expect Brian to make mistakes basically now I suppose that does cover and there are these you know minor characters that are like you know there are these two cops that are like you know continually like under underestimating Brian and just, yeah and they're you know quirky enough but not particularly interesting there there are a few very interesting things in this but they're over far too quickly there's there's one character especially who's just complete badass and really interesting and there's almost no time spent with him and he's introduced way too late as well it's like finally you know something got me to sit up in the chair and it's just nothing really done with yeah now yeah I suppose that's it if it weren't for the returning characters, you know, returning characters and the few returning actors, you wouldn't think this was a Taken movie, and it it really isn't. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise. The links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.